were your DMs like coming back from Paradise? Was this just a, a dating show where you were getting headshots sent to you? Like, you must have had a pretty, uh, pretty deep uh, list of uh, message requests. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think the most I, I've I obviously got a ridiculous, a crazy amount of DMs, and it was pretty much just so many. So many, uh, you know, people who were supporting, but also like women who were just like, "Hey, I'm just here to submit, you know, my girlfriend application." I'm like, I'm oh, yeah, not they even, just called it out like that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not even <laughs> looking for that right now. Well, I'm you're obviously... not looking, but you're still gonna browse a profile or two. I mean, yeah, if if it were to come up, I'm like, oh, okay, let let's see what's there. <laughs> Oh, very excited for my guest today, a Bachelor in Paradise star, <laughs> also on Bachelorette, and probably one of the biggest fan favorites of all time, Robbie <laughs> Matthews. How are you, man? I'm good, Dave. How Cheers, are you? Cheers, buddy. Cheers, brother. Welcome to the car. Nice to be in here. So, yeah, you know, a lot of, um, you know, the whole reporter saying, if it bleeds, it leads. Not much content has been made about you yeah. because you're kind of just a good guy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty chill and laid back for the most part. Yeah. Know? How long have you been in Los Angeles for? So I'm actually, uh, so I'm pretty much born and raised out here in SoCal. Okay. I've lived out here in Hollywood for about a year and a half now. Uh, moved in with uh, Nate from the show as soon oh, no as, way. as soon as Paradise ended, I, uh, I needed a new fresh start right. in my life. And so um, it was around the same time that his relationship was ending um, with Michelle as well from our season. And so uh, we kind of just thought it, it would be the perfect time for us to kind of start fresh and start new and, and start this new chapter of our lives out here in well, Hollywood. Well, so I wasn't out. gonna talk about Bachelorette, but since you brought it up, so <laughs> essentially you're living with your, a guy that, you're, you used to date Michelle obviously from her season of the show. She breaks up with you and then she gets engaged to Nate. That doesn't end well. I mean, yeah. but, but when, when does it, right? So no, <laughs> right. no hate on anybody. It just, it doesn't work out until it does. Mm -hmm. How does, uh, is, is there any dynamic of like, we dated the same girl or is that so TV, you know, is that just so like left in the past? Yeah, I think for us, it was just immediately left in the past. I, it was one of those things where with, with him and I, as soon as we met night one, because I, I met both of them the same day of my life, right? Which is crazy. But as soon as we met night one, I immediately was like, all right, well, this guy's going to win. I'm going to try my hardest to just be myself and and see where it gets me. And it's almost one of those things where as much as I was trying my hardest to, to showcase myself and show her who I was, I was also still developing this strong friendship with my boy Nate, who I had lived with as roommates. So it's one of those things where I would come back from my one-on-one -on -one and I'd be all excited, like, man, it was great, like everything was cool, you know, it was like our first couple talks, I was like, I, you know, I got a hug. It was a great day, I got a hug, <laughs> it was so cool. And he's yeah. like, man, we've been kissing since day one. I'm like, what? <laughs> so it was one of those things where it wasn't like him bragging, he was just being honest of like, yo, just to be honest, this is where I'm at in That's my relationship. So I was funny. like, all right, well, we are not the same. We're on very so different levels. It's interesting though, like in, a, in the real world mm -hmm. of relationship can marinate like mm -hmm. that and it can also move fast. But yeah. when, when you're comparing with all of these other men, the same mm -hmm. common denominator, which is Michelle, yeah. a beautiful, super, just lovely, you know, great, uh, perfect lead. You know, you start to get like wondering, you know, oh, I'm 5'11", he's six, seven. You start to like do the math on all of these things that really don't matter. She's either liking you or she's not. Exactly. But Nate's a good looking guy. Yeah. He's modeled height. You know, he's got the, he's got everything <laughs> going for him. That it's like, golly, I don't know. How tall are you? I'm six foot. Yeah, You're six foot. I'm five ten. I, I maybe six foot on a dating site back in the day. I jack my. I'd be like, oh, I'm six foot with my like cleats the on. You know the cleats you wear in the mud. I'd yeah. Be like, yeah, on those I'm maybe six foot after a chiropractor or hanging upside down. But um, yeah, like you start to look like mm. it, it gets competitive like that. Now, That's a lot. You know what's interesting to me is there seems to be not to make everything gender related, but uh -huh. it, you know you can generalize based on genders, which always gets me in trouble. But it seems to be that women want to find out which guys are f boys. Mm. You know, they want to find out like, is he here for the right reasons? Is he this? Yeah. Is he that? And I'm more of the belief that for the right person, you kind of straighten out 
You yeah. know, for the right person, you kind of try to be a better version of yourself. 100%. And for the wrong person, you might just try to have a good time. And yeah. you never want to mislead anybody. But did you, because Nate got a lot of the sort of like F boy criticism, whereas mm. you got the nice guy kind of like, oh, Rodney's, you know, the lovable guy. What, yeah. what, what it makes the difference between the two? Yeah, it's, it's sad. I, I know that we talk about it a lot because him and I share a lot of, uh, a lot of similarities in that way. Mm -hmm. And it's sad how two people who could be so similar sometimes, it, you know, it was kind of viewed in different lights. And I'm, gr I'm grateful that I was highlighted in that way and showcased in that way. And I was just being myself the entire time. But I do feel that there were, there were kind of viewpoints that were skewed about Nate. And we even talked about, I remember when trailers would drop and we're just like, wait, why did that happen? Or why was that said? Like that moment wasn't about you or that wasn't even said towards you or it's two completely different couches. Like you never know how the, the final edit's gonna end up. Yeah. Um, but I, we know at the end of the day, I think that was kind of our biggest thing is just saying, hey, at the end of the day, we're still gonna stay true to ourselves. Like I know you're a good guy, you know you're a good guy. Yeah. And I think even, um, it, it's just, it could be a, a different type of challenge, but we always kind of just like uplift each other at the end of the day saying like, no matter what, we're going to be boys and always know that we know who we are from the show and we know who are, we are in real life. And it, it is tough to kind of tote that line sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I, I always had so much respect for him because I know how good of a guy he is. And that's something I remember we were getting so many, so many comments, like we were getting so many comments and DMs and Roddy, how can you be friends with him? This and that. We're like, because I, I know him. Crazy, <laughs> but, but it, that's crazy. That's you crazy, know? right? Like, and I was just so shocked. I'm like, first of all, that's also judging my character and my judgment because obviously if, if he was that bad of a guy, I wouldn't be hanging out with him. I wouldn't be kicking it with him, you know? And at the end of the day, I know him better than probably anyone else. And so, you know, I know he's a good guy and it's one of those things where I don't care what it, edit looks like or anything or what anyone says about him. You know, at the end of the day... I know who he is and what he's about and so like I'm always going to stick up for my bro in that way and and we've always just had each other's back especially and ever that since goes we left a, the show. Yeah, that goes a long way to someone's character to know that you're not going to be swayed by what some people will it'll it'll be radioactive. Like mm -hmm. if someone gets the bad edit, if they're the yeah. great grippo or the Nate or someone who's just like yeah. god forbid the relationship doesn't work out. They're uh, they're they're just now made to be this person that that they aren't on their worst day yeah. but also on their best day. Like we're all like a combination of our reactions to life, right? Just exactly. trying to do our best with the information we have. It's so simple, yeah. but it's it, that, knowing that it kind of makes it not so salacious that someone's this really awful person. Right. Um, so, but what was interesting, and my core memory of you, I believe, is naked with a pillow over you, running around a what I believe to be a mansion or wherever <laughs> the hell you guys were, and you oh. had such a joy, uh, <laughs> and a joy of life that. And I said this, I was on the, um, the Black Roses podcast mm -hmm. last week. They're a fantastic oh, yes, group of ladies. Great, great podcast. And they told me to tell you, they said hi. Oh my God, and yeah, tell them I said hey. We were talking about paradise and oh. how hard it can be to read somebody's character because you're only getting, getting snippets. But I said the one way you can read someone's character is how everyone else reacts to them. Mm -hmm. And on your season, you had a whole beach crying for you because they cared about you so much. Yeah. You know, you like, how does that make you feel when you watch that back and see that? I mean, honestly, it's, it was like the most, one of the most bittersweet moments I've ever had in my life because it's not, it's not something I want. Like I never, I wasn't there. My intention was never there to, to make people cry, you know, at the end of the day. And me and that group of people grew so close on that beach after everything we all went through as a collective last year and and it was just so tough right and for me to see everyone like crying for me i was like oh, i i'm grateful that for the love and support i always will be but i felt so bad because i'm like i didn't want to make everyone cry right and i think i think at the end you're of the just day feeling your emotions yeah but, you, know, you know emotions are heightened in the yeah and you you can't help it after everything we go through together it's so tough not to just you can't just hide it in or keep oh, yeah. it in anymore. Like you kind of just let you it break out at it. that point. You break it. You're like, all right, I guess I'm the guy yeah. that's gonna cry on camera. And I honestly like seeing the reaction. I was like, oh my god. And they, you know, when we all got back home, 
and everyone called me. They're like, man, you, we were never the same after you left. And I think it wasn't, it wasn't just me, right? It wasn't just that event. I think it was everything leading up to that for everybody. It was almost like everyone's breaking point or yeah. everyone was fed up. Like, okay, this just happened to Rodney. Like what's next? And now, I try my hardest to just be there for everybody. And, and I just, I love that cast so but much. But by all means, you're not giving yourself enough credit. Like, sure, <laughs> sure, there was this heightened thing that you were all a part of, but mm -hmm. they, you were like the lifeblood from the audience <laughs> perspective of this season, yeah. which goes a long way because the show does bring out or has the possibility to bring out very selfish aspects. You're yeah. competing over, you know, you and your buddy Justin, who was a guest mm -hmm. on our show here, yes. were kind of like liking the same girl. Eli yeah. Is it Eliza? Did my pronounce that right? Yes. And, you know... Uh, it's hard to know what's love and what's just nice on a beach, mm. you know, and, and that's a tough conversation to have. And sometimes you don't find out till afterwards. But what was it like? You said it was bittersweet. So what was it yeah. like? What was the actual feeling you were going through? Was it uh, just this is now the second time you're kind of getting dumped? Or mm. Well, you, were, it were, you weren't exactly dumped, right? It was like a kind of a... It was, it's so tough to describe <laughs> what it was. And, and still to this day, I'm like, all right, I just kind of pushed that out of my head. But... It was definitely a feeling of, um, I tried my hardest, uh, to kind of uplift everybody, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the downtimes. And I, you know, shout out Andrew Spencer. Cause we would go back and forth. Like me and Drew would go back and forth of trying our hardest to like sing and dance and laugh and joke and kind of just keep spirits high because it's such a high pressure situation, you know? And, uh, I, that's why we would kind of just lean on each other to kind of uplift the group. And so when all of that stuff went down with me, I was so, I was so saddened and, and heartbroken. I was just so mad and frustrated in those moments. And everyone could sense that. And that entire week or two, everyone could see what I was going through. It was, it was a mental and emotional roller coaster. I, and I'm so grateful that I like had everyone there to kind of still support me through it and, and uplift me too. It's like, you know, I was trying so hard to be everyone's light and just laughter and all that stuff. And so once I was down, my group, all that, that entire, all those people on that beach uplifted me in those moments. And I, that's something I can never like repay them for, you know, and I'm just so grateful for all that love and support. Yeah. And were you surprised? So obviously you got it on the beach. Were you surprised to get it that much from the audience? Um, to be honest, yeah, I, I was really surprised. I know our biggest thing, you know, when, when me and Justin were on that beach, our biggest thing is we were so nervous that everyone immediately would be like, Team Rodney, Team Justin, or this and that, and just kind of pick sides or or love one or hate the other and, and vice versa. And so we were so nervous about that. And then I kept trying to tell them, I was like, no, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to be like that. And then once we got out into the real world and the show airs, it, it did kind of become that. And I, I was so shocked that I did get so much support. I think... I'm grateful that once again, everyone can see who just watches that screen. I am who I am. I'm very genuine and true to myself. And everyone knows like I am a good, genuine guy looking for love, uh, you know, and thank God I've, I finally found it now off the show. But I, it was one of those things where I think during those times and those moments, people can kind of see my character and know what I'm about. You know, you led me to my next question about finding love. You hard launched, yes. I believe last month, your relationship. Yes, I did. Which of course, is what the kids are calling the FBI. <laughs> We used to call it Facebook official back in my day, <laughs> back when Facebook was the, I don't even think I'm officially in a relationship with my wife on Facebook, but I don't think we care about that anymore. But uh, what was that process like? Do you talk to your partner and say, like, where, when do you become official between the two of you versus oh. launching it publicly? Because she's not a member of Bachelor Nation, so yeah. were you worried to introduce her to this uh, ragtag group? It's so funny, yeah. Just to kind of, like, bring her into my world, and it was almost like a... It was almost like a warning of like, hey, babe, just a heads up. <laughs> um, obviously, I come from this crazy world now. Uh, I just want to let you know, obviously, it's like, it is what it's yeah, called, like, like a hard launch. You want to look at your Twitter history. She's like, they're going to be weird. <laughs> they're going to be looking at your yeah, court like, documents. You got all your, they're going to be doing all the research. You got all your tickets paid in the you mail. <laughs> so it was one of those conversations that you have to have with your significant other. And it was one of those where um, I did want to let her know, I'm like, hey, obviously, um, and we would kind of go back and forth and she's like, my friends were kind of prepping me too of like, it's, it's a hard launch. It's going to be a big deal. I was like, yeah, I, I think it is kind of a big deal when someone from our world announces like, Hey, I have officially found love, especially because you know, that is what, uh, a lot of people in our lives, friends and family and the audience themselves are hoping for us, you know, and rooting for us. So it's always so exciting when 
I, especially that I, now that I found that, but I did have to prep her like, hey, you know, we are gonna hard launch. There's gonna be a, a good amount of comments. Um, I just want to, I just want you to know, like, I'm here for you. I love you. And like, you know, we have each other's back. So just be prepped for it, be ready for it. And I think the funny part is in her eyes, she was almost like so nervous. Oh yeah. And then her name is Ari and she immediately, a lot of people in her corner were like, Hey, don't worry. Ronnie was loved on the show. So you'll be good. And she's just like, no, I'm still nervous. I'm still nervous. And then once we got all the the fan support in the comments and the DMs. She's like, oh my God, like I feel so much better. You know, people don't hate me or they're not, you know, clowning me or, or judging me or anything like that. It was just true, genuine yeah. uh, happiness and, and love for us. So I, know I was that, grateful for that. Oh, that's so good to hear. But you know, that, that parasocial relationship is mm -hmm. sort of important when it comes to, I'm sure you get a lot of engagement on your posts and yeah. sometimes it's like, all right, Becca Krufins haven't, they had a baby, but yeah. let's, we're doing baby things. The baby community is going to be huge. It's going to be <laughs> profitable. Your yeah. rates go up. Like being in a relationship, it's like you have to navigate, how do I protect my relationship? But yes. also it, try to expose it to some of the good aspects of this life that you are now a part of, yeah. whether you want to be a part of it or not. Yeah. So what were your DMs like coming back from paradise? Was this just a, a dating show where you were getting headshots sent to you? Like you must have had a pretty, uh, pretty deep uh, list of uh, message requests. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think the most, I, I've, I obviously got a ridiculous, a crazy amount of DMs and it was pretty much just so many, so many, uh, you know, people who were supporting, but also like women who were just like, hey, I'm just here to submit, you know, my girlfriend application. I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, not they even, just called it out like that? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not even <laughs> looking for that right now. Well, I'm you're not looking, but you're still going to browse a profile or two. I mean, yeah, if, if it were to come up, I'm like, oh, okay, let, let's see what's there. But at the end of the day, I, I told so many people and people wouldn't even believe me at that point, but I was just so mentally checked out of oh, yeah. looking for love and especially because you know the the time period too we filmed last summer mm -hmm. and then it airs last fall and that time period i'm like i don't even want to date or talk to anybody i know that this huge bomb is gonna drop and i'm just like you know what? i need to just stick to myself i need to stay to myself for once and not just try to look for love or, or be in a relationship or anything i just said i'm gonna calm calm my mind and, and let let it take its course. Well, I always say like, yeah, you have to be on stable ground. You're gonna, mm -hmm. you're just going to attract whatever craziness is in your own life. If you're True. not in a place where you have a solid like foundation of what you want and yeah. who you are, then you're just not going to get that. It's just a simple law of attraction, right? True. So then where were you when like emotionally when you met your now official girlfriend? Yes. And how did that haul? How did you guys come together? Yeah. So we honestly we, we met at the uh we met at the perfect time of our lives uh especially before all the madness started again in in our lives but um it was to the point where i finally was ready to to dive back into that pool and and see if i could find love mm -hmm. and so just as soon as i was saying that of like okay i'm gonna put myself out there again give myself a chance like it the time has passed the show is done as soon as I said that, it was one of those things where uh, we found each other. And we met at the Venice, the, the Whaler in Venice. All right. Which is crazy. That's how you, that's a high volume place. <laughs> I, I've never, <laughs> I've never been there my entire life. Yeah. And our, our story is just so funny. And people to this day didn't, still didn't even believe it until we, we posted it and posted the videos. Who, and who were you with when you met her? So I had a, guys? I had a good amount of group with me. Yeah, I had a good amount of friends with me, about five or you? six. Did you have like bachelor guys with you? So I had Justin with me. Okay. Yeah, so I did have- You guys must have got like a sore thumb. Like, yeah. Oh, but they're the bachelor guys. <laughs> but you know? funny enough, I mean that night, thankfully no one recognized us, which was great. Like, I love that. And you know, uh, Ari walks in with her best friend, uh, Aubrey, and you know, we see these two girls walk in they're over by the DJ booth and me and Justin are there with a good group uh, of my friends from high school and college. Yeah. And when, when she walked in, I'm like, wait a minute. I, it's funny. I was waiting for another friend to show up. I said, as soon as Dalen gets here, I'm leaving. This place is weird. We got to get out of here. <laughs> it's a crazy crowd. The, the drinks. Suck. I said, the only good thing about this place right now in my life 
is the music. Yeah. Um, it had 90s, 2000s hip hop and R&B. And if that music's playing, like I will give a place a chance. For sure. But that was the only good part of that night at first. And thank God my friend was running late because I said, guys, as soon as he gets here, this place is weird. We got to dip. Okay, so, so let me draw, let me paint the picture. <laughs> you and Justin, you're, you're all bullshitting and play sucks. All of a sudden, um, uh, you say Aerie? Yes. Aerie right? walks in with Aubrey. Is that yes. friend? Aerie and Aubrey. Yeah. And then... Everything stands still. The the wind hits her hair. She's everything, and then this uh, this like path opens up. And, yeah. And, okay. And then what? Hey, Dave, it was like a movie. Like the light just shone. Her. I was like, wait a minute. The disco ball hits her. Yeah. I'm like just the light. This was like a daytime brunch though. So no, this was nighttime. Okay. This was oh, you're nighttime. at the whaler at nighttime. You're really, whaler at nighttime. You're really right? going after it. Yeah. It was my friends who were like, let's just try somewhere new. Let's go somewhere new and just see some new faces. And we need new scenery. I'm like, you guys are crazy. I've never been to that part of that side of town, like to go out. I'm like, yeah, this place. It's touristy, place. but it's still, yeah. it's still a high volume place. So there's a lot of people that come and go. Right. I mean, thank God that I gave it a chance that night and I didn't leave too early. And so as soon as, uh, as soon as we met, like our eyes kind of locked and it was one of those things where I'm like, I'm 95% positive this, this woman's looking at me, but either way. I need to go up and get her name and number before we leave. Well, they used to call that like the three second rule where once you make eye contact, you it's almost like you have to go now or yes. else you'll kind of look a little weak if you're like, yeah. kind of like, ooh. So did you, were you like, I think she's looking at me and then and then you just, like, what's the move? Yeah, like me, me and Justin <laughs> were going back and forth. I was like, Justin, I see this girl. I, I almost feel like she's looking at me. Either way, I have to shoot my shot. And he's like, all right, well, you know, let, let, let's get a game plan going. Let's get a game plan. I'm like, no, I just need to go. Like, it was one of those where, like, I didn't want to sit there and wait for, like, 10, 15 minutes. Him and I were going back and forth for oh, a good five minutes. Oh, you'll talk yourself out of it or you'll talk yourself into yeah. some shitty pickup line. Yeah, in which I ended up having a shitty pickup <laughs> line. Unfortunately, like, that's just my style. I'm just, like, ridiculous. And so I walk up to her finally and Rihanna's playing in the background. And it was, uh, it was Disturbia, and I'm like, I walk up to her, this ridiculous line of like, hey, miss, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you during Disturbia. And she's like, did you actually mean to say that? And I'm like, look, I'm ridiculous, but I would <laughs> love to just get your name and, and buy you a drink if that's okay. And so she said, yeah, sure, but you have to buy my friend a drink, too. I said, say no more. Done, I'll, done. I'll be right back. West Coast prices, <laughs> yes. $9 drinks at the minimum. It was like, Probably 15, I am, actually, over there. It was, it was a little hefty price, yeah. but I was willing to risk it all. And so me and Justin go to the bar real quick. And he's like, okay, like, do you think they know who we are? I said, absolutely not. Let's just, you know, let's keep this going. I'm just going to, I'm Rodney. That's it. I'm, nor I'm very, we're very normal people. And I just keep that going. I was like, I'm, I'm a normal guy and I'm willing to prove that. And so that night, yeah, I'd come back with the drinks and we start talking all night and laughing and joking, just going back and forth. And I just finally asked her, I said, you know, what's your go-to karaoke song? And she said, oh, it's, it's gotta be uh, no air Jordan sparks, Chris Brown. I said, no problem. <laughs> I go to the DJ booth, request it. About 10, 15 minutes later, it finally comes on. She's like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, let's go. Like, you're Jordan Sparks. I'm Chris Brown. Let's go ahead and just start singing it. And so we start singing it and going back and forth. And we're fully, like, thinking we're in a 90s MTV, like, music video. Like, it's just me and her in there. The dance floor starts clearing out. People are like, what? And me and her just start going. Like, we're just singing, dancing, laughing, like, going back and forth. Sing the entire song. As soon as we're done, People come up to us left and right. They're like, you guys are the most beautiful couple we've ever seen. Like, you guys are just so adorable, so cute. And we're like, we just met about an hour ago. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> crowdsourcing, man. The, the, you know, strangers will tell you the truth. Yeah. They will exactly, tell you the truth. Because they have no other bias, no reason not to. No. And not, like I said, not one person was in there like, oh, Rodney from The Bachelor. Like, no. And no one recognized us. No one was in there taking videos or anything like that. The funniest part is, like, her friend was recording. They were like, I can't believe... Aerie's so happy right now and then all of a sudden they sent the they sent the footage back to her friends on the east coast of like Aerie met this guy last night she seemed so happy like he's asking her out on a date wait they had the karaoke footage oh yeah so her oh, best nice. friend was recording right oh my gosh and so even uh so that happened and they sent that back to her fr her best friends on the east coast uh because she's from new jersey Oh, love Jersey girls. <laughs> and so, yeah, so Garden her... state, represent. Right? So the Jersey girls, her best friends back home, they watch the show, but the her and her best friend that night, they've never seen the show in their life. So... Oh, boy, they're going to do a deep dive on you. <laughs> immediately, so... Uh, Which, by the way, that can't affect the first uh -huh. impression. 
the first impression does not get changed. So that's great yes. that you guys were able to have that before yes. they did the research. Because these ladies, they will be doing deep dives. They'll have yeah. all the tabs open on you. I always get worried that someone's just going to like think about the show or go straight to my IG or anything like that. And I just... I really wanted someone who could like connect with me for me. Absolutely. And you know, I, I loved that fact that it was just so real, natural and organic. And even the way that she found out, I remember she's just like, man, I really hope like that guy asks me out or takes me out on a date. And I told her immediately, I was like, I'm here. Like, what are you doing Wednesday at uh, seven o'clock? So, while, so the you night out. you met, you mm -hmm. were ready to plan the next time you were going to see her. Immediately. That's so great. Immediately. Yeah. yeah I just, you need to take the, I think people, when, when you talk about like the law of attraction, I mm -hmm. think people respond to that trust when you're confident. Yes. Now some people might get needy, but I don't think relationships, I think if, if, if someone's pushy or whatever, mm -hmm. the relationship's already weird. But if you're like, yeah. I know what I want. Yeah. I think a lot of women and men too would just respect that somebody has a rudder. Yeah. has a direction they want to go. Exactly. I'm very, I'm I'm very intentional and I, I make that known from the get-go is like hey I'm here to and and even on our first date she's like all right I need to know your intentions because she's like I've been on a lot of bad first dates and I just need to know your intentions I said well I'm I'm here to look for a future wife and so you know obviously we'll we'll start slow and everything but it's like I'm here for my future I'm looking to be a a husband a father like I'm looking to move on to the next stage of my life I'm not just trying to be a bachelor forever I really want to move on with my life and so that was the coolest part of having that first date and I remember she went back to her friends and and confirmed it was like the first date was amazing and I really like this guy I'm excited and then I remember her friends kept asking more questions and so they're just like you know what's his name again she's like okay Rodney and and she was like oh yeah we got footage from the first night so she sent them uh, the videos from our first night together which is the videos I posted uh, for a hard launch and once she sent those videos her friends were like oh my god like do you do you know who that is and so she's like what are you even, talking about you didn't even warn her not a chance oh, no wow. I did not that's impressive. Yeah, our first date, you know, obviously first I'm time so, we met. I'm so insecure, date. I'd be leading with that. I'm verified. <laughs> hey, how are you? Uh, not people at all. know who I am. We did not even, our first date, we didn't even have our Instagrams. Like, I wanted this to uh. be so pure and organic and to confirm that she wanted me for me and vice versa. And so I was just so excited for that fact. And then I remember our uh, second date is when she finally admitted she's like okay so we need to uh <laughs> we need to talk about your past a little bit if that's okay i was like oh okay like let's <laughs> let's talk about it i remember her friends kept kept telling her and asking her like wait you mean to tell me you guys went through a whole three or four hour first date at a restaurant and didn't once talk about the show she's like no he never brought that up i'm just now learning from you guys that he was even on a show like i don't have his instagram you know so um i think that that made it even better in in my eyes that it was just so pure and genuine of like this woman truly wants me for me because that's all she knew at first and now that this layer was added into it and obviously we went over it and she's like i just want you whatever you feel comfortable telling me about the show is what i want to hear and if not we never have to talk about it i just want to let you know that i finally do know about it and i just want to know you for you if that's okay like i'm still very invested in just who you are as a person that's so good to hear i mean was yeah. it a fear of yours that someone would kind of like want you because you'd, it'd be a cool thing to date a bachelor contestant or something. I think, yeah. I, it's I've a weird been, place to be in. Yeah, I, I've been on a couple first dates in the past where, uh, you know, like I said, I didn't want to put myself out there. And I think because I did go on a couple first dates after the show that it was, it was awkward. And did you do online dating? No, I did no. not. Yeah, no. Yeah. I, I made it so like I, I had like a couple first dates and I know that in both of those experiences, it was very... It was very weird and awkward for me because those women kind of made it known immediately that they watched the show, they were fans of the show, and it was kind of like asking so many questions and then yeah. taking pictures of me mm. or, or like little quick videos like that. Um, which just made social it social proof. It's, yeah. it's social proof that they got a chance. I mean, it's, it's like tagging me on the date, and it's like it's our first date. It's like I don't yeah. even know you yet. I'd like to, and it's probably with good intention, but it, yeah. it does like take away like the equal footing when you start a relationship. Yeah. Oh man, I always wonder. Like I, you know, well because when I asked about online dating, so many people waste their time on online dating. But mm -hmm. if you really think about the amount of eye contact you made with different people at the whaler, that's like yeah. swiping left or right on hundreds of people, <laughs> right? I mean, 
people in real life, the yeah. social cues are there. It sounds so privileged to say, mm -hmm. to be like, oh yeah, just go meet somebody. But it's like, you, so much bullshit comes from the internet where True. you don't know who someone really is. And it True. sounds like you did the most organic thing, yes. which is you go to a bar, which is where single people go to yeah. maybe meet someone, maybe have fun. And yeah. then everything else seems to have worked out. How many months ago was the whaler? Uh, June 3rd. June wow. 3rd is when I was there. Um, and that's the night we met. And are you, yeah. and I can cut this out, but are you, is it open that you're going to move in together or no? Uh, not yet, but I mean, I'm, I'm fine with you keeping no, it you in there. break I, it in? Oh, breaking news. I, pl I planned on sharing it soon anyway, so. Well, I asked because the, the idea of mm -hmm. like time moving on a linear plane, like things mm -hmm. happen fast. Yes. My wife and I, we moved in months into starting dating. Really? But we, we were there. We were kind of like you guys, it seems. So yeah. We were just like, we were there. Actually, I'll tell you this. We just, we just uh, were driving by one of the canyons here in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. I love the, I love the energy vortex that comes with some of the canyons here. There's always like a lot of cool energy that comes in this area. Yes. But my wife and I, we were just friends. We were walking through one of the canyons you know, on one of the paths, and there was a guy, there was a photographer with a lens shooting like bicyclists or something. Uh -huh. And he goes, can I take your photo? You guys are beautiful together. <laughs> and we were like, we're just friends. <laughs> and we saved that photo. We started dating months later, but we wow. saved that photo. And it was like that moment where strangers know something yeah. you might not necessarily realize, although it sounds like you did. But was it was it too, was there any worry that it was happening too fast between you or, or your lady? It was one of those things where real quick, we kind of checked ourselves, but at the same time we looked at each other and said well what what is too fast like if we if we're feeling it we're both grown mature adults and we've both been through horrible toxic relationships so it's like at the end of the day i truly think you know when you know you know and i was always told that forever i'm like yeah right whatever this is so cliche like it's not gonna happen and i'm telling you dave like from the second i met her and the more i got to know her through the the first few dates that we went on I knew immediately, I'm like, she's the one. I, I recognize it, I see it, I feel it, and I've never had this feeling before of this confidence, this confirmation, and I was so grateful for it. And Dude, we love to hear it. I was, uh, I was just excited, man. Um, have you met the family? So uh, oh, I fly Jer out. East Jersey. Oh, you. Oh, I fly boy. out next week. Oh, uh, next weekend. East Jersey to meet. Uh, dads don't mess around. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm very. I'm so excited to meet uh, all of her friends and family on the East Coast. Yeah, she's she's from Port Norris, New Jersey, and I believe I'm gonna go visit Cape May, New Jersey. Oh, Cape May, it, nice, beautiful. Yeah. So I'm very excited to meet everybody there. They've expressed that they're excited to meet me. Um, so yeah, I just can't wait. Especially like I said, there. Her fr a lot of her friends and family are fans of the show. Yeah. And so uh, the specific ones who know me from that are just, as soon as uh, Ari told them, they're like, don't worry, we already approve Rodney. Like, we love him. Uh, <laughs> well, just... yeah, I mean, literally. Is, 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 you've had, a, you've had a, a rightfully good edit. Now, I wanted to ask you this because yes. there's a lot of alumni that played football. Yeah. And yeah. I always like to make the parallel between beauty queens and football players <laughs> doing well in the show. Uh -huh. And and I think it's because you learn how to like take orders. <laughs> yes. Like you learn how to just do your job, run the yeah. ball hard, whatever. And the producers yeah. kind of are like your coach in a sense. Yeah. So discipline what's your, is key. Yeah. What's your football experience? Uh -huh. And um and how and how did it? What, what's the difference between uh, you know? tackling someone which can hurt versus getting hurt on tv <laughs> like your soul hurting versus your body yeah i honestly what i loved about football so much and i was grateful to to play for so long and have a, a solid enough career and paid for my college and i was captain so i had so i you developed got a, you, had a, you, had a, you had a college scholarship a full ride scholarship yeah to up to fresno state up which, north which by the way you're you're a big guy but you're like that, you must be extremely athletic because you're not like <laughs> you know no offense but you're not like six six you know like, somebody, <laughs> like some of those guys that come out of there i was complete jack i was very athletic back in the day now i've just try to maintain and stay fit uh because i got a couple bad knees from football there so it's know. what it is but um i think what really helped with football in my career and my life leading into that is um, the discipline and the social factor. And so football helped me so much to get, gain a competitive factor and also confidence. And I love that so much. And like we said, obviously that discipline, like I was scared to miss 
practice. I was scared to be late for a meeting. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's not, that just doesn't exist or else you, that punishment, you're going to feel that punishment all week. And so I was very grateful to learn those skills. And I always like relay everything back. Like all my entire success in life is through moms and football. And so with football, I was grateful to kind of learn so much of those aspects and then bring that into the show of like, all right, I am in a competitive setting where I'm one of the shortest people here and you know what what can I do to truly stand out and also I mean like I said it kind of helped me gain and build that confidence and and the only criticism I ever got was like oh this guy must be lacking confidence I'm like no I said one thing on the show one time one night that got repeated five times in an edit I'm like I only said it once but uh, you know I'm grateful that people could kind of see through that and just know like I'm here to I'm here to compete I'm here to show my best self be my best self and at the end of the day just just be me and and help other people kind of gain their confidence as well you know football is interesting because I played like in a high school d1 level but not college and um I learned more from football than anything in life, including how how to deal with adversity. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, because adversity, it's like what, it's like how you act when nobody's watching. Yeah. And while the cameras are on you, in a sense, they kind of get it to the point where they kind of beat you down to the point where you start acting like the cameras aren't on, Uh which can get people in trouble. (laughs) But I, I think, yeah, I think, I think for me, football taught me how to work hard and it just created scenarios that would not necessarily be natural for like someone in their teens growing up where Mm -hmm. it like creates a very hard scenario for you. And I think that's good to like, to do that in a, in sort of a way where it can be teachable. So you're coaching now and are you getting gratitude from seeing the kids learn about some of these structures, you know, to have with life? Yeah. I, I, I've learned two things. Like what I've really learned is this generation is definitely very different and they do make me feel old sometimes, <laughs> but the, the kids that are out there who are ready and willing to work and compete and also just listen, like I said, like just be coachable, which, it, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they don't get that if, if they haven't played sports. And I'm glad that football gave me that of just being coachable. Like I'm very good at taking constructive criticism. I'm very self-aware of myself and my surroundings and who I am as a, as a person, as a man. And it is one of those things where I love, um, I love kind of giving back in that way. Um, because like my love and passion for football and how football leads into life. Um, you know, I had a kid the other day that I was coaching up and he was struggling with a a technique and a concept and he was losing and I'm like, Hey, get, get over here. And he's like, no, coach, I'm done. Like, it's just not my day. And just starts walking off. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, that's not how life works. You can't just walk off and, and just quit and just give up. I'm like, come right back. Listen to what I'm telling you and relay that and, and translate and play that way. I promise you it'll help. Yeah. Then he starts winning and feeling better. He's like, okay, you're right, coach. Like, I got it. I got it down. I finally, and like, he starts winning three or four reps after that. I'm like, aren't you glad you didn't just quit and give up? Yeah. He's like, all right, coach Rod, you got me. You got me. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) that's like, that's life. Like you have to understand like, yes, that's football. And I'm teaching that on a Tuesday night practice, but that's also life. It's like a growth mindset where, you know, like I, I don't, I I don't know how to dance, but I learned to dance (laughs) for my wedding and I just shared it online and people went crazy. (laughs) We got married a year ago, but I just like on the one year anniversary shared this dance. We had a professional dance, teacher like uh-huh. who like toured dancing with the stars and everything wow. and and i was like i know i don't know how to do this but i know he's going to teach me one step at a time yeah and i know that i i'm smart enough to know that i will learn because i will do it on a path that is manageable and bite yeah. size and i think that mindset overcomes the perfection mindset which mm-hmm. is if i'm not perfect why even try yeah. and a lot of people will reach you know some some form of perfection early on and only stick to that being their thing yeah. and i'm all about like trying new things i just feel like it, it makes the brain grow in new ways to challenge yourself I agree. which is why like these conversations aren't always supernatural mm-hmm. for me because it's just like an it's kind of like and, you know, a lot of episodes where people are like, you're not making eye contact. And I'm like, I'm trying to drive. And then there'll be episodes <laughs> yeah. where people are like, what, you're not driving safely. And I'm like, I'm driving. <laughs> so, but I'm just like trying to create yeah. scenarios where we can have conversations that yeah. are moving forward, which is both a metaphor of driving, but it's also kind of that vibe of like, 
moving forward in life. Yes. Learning from your mistakes and, and like what you've seemed to have found with your relationship, mm -hmm. knowing from what didn't work out yes. and what wasn't right to finding out what's perfect. So like exactly. what might've been a heartbreak with Michelle or Eliza mm -hmm. or whoever yes. uh, really became a moment where you learned you were kind of pushed in a, in a different direction. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And so as long as you take the the lessons and don't just always call them losses I, I think you can always find a way to bounce back in life which sucks to hear in the moment when someone's like yeah everything happens for a reason you're like let me cry <laughs> give me some ice cream <laughs> just stop yeah. you always got to allow it and give yourself some grace and just calm your mind and calm your nerves but at the end of the day it's I think as eventually when you look back at a lot of events in your life you're just like okay well maybe this happened so I can go here like the, I honestly they're all rungs on a ladder yeah and you gotta just take the steps like, you gotta just otherwise you'll, you'll you know what I mean like yeah. use that to get to the next place yeah like I'm not the biggest crier to be honest like I have no problem like crying if it gets to that point you know like I'm men crying I'm all for like mental health awareness and all that good stuff I the the hardest I ever cried one of the hardest I've ever cried in my life uh, times was when I was offered my first scholarship and that was uh, for the University of Illinois. So to play, you know, Big Ten football, I was Big, so excited yeah. about that. And I'm like, wow, this is the dream come true. This is everything I've worked for in my entire life. And the next week was my official visit to uh, Fresno State. And I'm like, I'm not going to Fresno State. Like, I'm going to Illinois. And, you know, I committed to Illinois. I was so excited. Two days before my visit to Fresno State, Illinois calls me and they're like, hey, kid, we're so sorry. Um, we got to take your scholarship back. We have to give it to an old lineman. Oh. I was crushed. I mean, I took my mom on this visit. She's already rocking the Illinois hoodie, beanie, oh, yeah. scarf. Oh, yeah, you met the people. Yeah, the Facebook. coaches, the staff, like, you're, the you're, teachers. You conspired the whole thing. Oh, my God. Me. It's it's Rodney's going to Illinois. And I'm so excited and late. I couldn't believe it. And for, the, for me to get that call, Man. heartbreaking. And... Um, I was bawling my eyes out, just having to call my mom and say, hey moms, that visit we just took a week ago, that offer's gone now. And um, What a crazy thing to for like an 18 year old to have to deal with. It's awful, and obviously I look back at coaches, I'm like, how could you do that? And I'm like, at the end of the day, I have to understand it's still technically, even though it's college sports and it's this and that, it's now like, as we see, it's like a business, right? Oh, yeah, it's leading so into many the NFL. Slots and you know, and I, I understand because at the end of the day, you have to make the best decisions. So, what for do you think team. happened? Did somebody else like drop out and then they were ahead of you on the charts? I bet you, from what it sounded like, is that another O lineman probably left, decommitted, and went to another school. And so they needed the next O lineman up on their charts. And they're just like, all right, well, we're still good at safety for the next year or two. Like, let's let's take this other guy and, and we have to take the scholarship away. So that one broke me in. So and that's so what I ended up going to. I remember going on the Fresno State visit and coach is like, hey, you know, we're going to do whatever we can to make sure you commit here. You don't want to go to Illinois. And I'm playing it up like, let's see what you got in store for me. <laughs> like, let's see, you know, let's see what happens. Oh, that's funny. You know, I had to play it up and, you know, be an actor at that point. But I, at the end of the day, you know, I ended up obviously committing to Fresno State and it was one of, you know, the best decisions and moments of my life. And, you know, it was still a lot of heartbreak there because, you know, I'm tearing ACLs and hurting my knees. But I, at the end of the day, I still can say I played Division One football. I earned a college scholarship. And it's like I still had a dream come true That's for incredible. Me. You know, for me to be, I played the NCAA college football 14 game all my life. Like, I was playing NCAA EA Sports college football all, every day, all day. And, and for me to finally earn my way and get on that game and, have my friends say, Rod, I'm playing with you on a video game. That's a dream come true. That's why You know, and that's something that I wouldn't trade for anything is just those memories and those moments of playing in front of 40,000 people and playing against Rutgers, you know, for college football kickoff. And it's just such a cool feeling. And I'm so grateful that I had that experience. You know, it's uh, for those that listen that don't understand college football. Oh. So it's like University of Illinois took your rose away. That's kind of like <laughs> Yeah. Like they gave you what it took yeah. it away. But then but then it all seemed to work out. But yeah, that is yeah. gosh, I had one of the one of the moments I can remember crying was actually when I found out I made it on the walk on team for D for college baseball. Oh really? And I called my mom just like you know, just crying. Yeah. I mean not like you know, I just couldn't get it out because I was so proud. Yeah. And then like a w month and a half later getting cut and this happened no three way. times to me where I was like only making it on the fall team and then they have to cut it down for the spring roster what? and in hindsight I was probably just like batting practice pitcher for them 
but it what, was like what school was it? University of Rhode Island. So oh, nice. it's New England, but I still I still play baseball. I'm going on a, a trip tomorrow. Actually, really, my, my team plays in the adult. They just call it like the adult World Series, but it's like a oh, men's nice. baseball tournament in um, Phoenix. We go for like five days. Oh, nice! So I'm going to run into Clayton Eckert over there. Oh, okay, yeah, he's going <laughs> to be the next guest on Driving with. Derek. Oh, nice, so my boy Clayton. To, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Oh. Yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> I just saw your update. I saw his update. I'm like, okay, yeah, you guys got a, a lot to discuss. When Clayton today. makes an – yeah, he's in the – so there's different types of alumni mm-hmm. in different ways. Yep. And when someone's in a heightened time period, I have those alerts turned on. Yeah. So I had him for – uh, a, I had him for Serene for a while because yeah. there was like wonder about her relationship and now she's single. Yeah. I had him for, you know, just when there's, you know, chatter about who, mm-hmm. you know, you just got to be on top of the news of like that. But what's interesting, and maybe we can leave in a second here, is, um, you know, you come from the time period on The Bachelor where mm-hmm. um, an influencer life isn't necessarily guaranteed. It's like kind yeah. of like the post height of the show where everyone's yes. getting millions of followers. Oh, yeah. And it can be very challenging to yeah. sort of like, cope with that mm-hmm. um, identity of like learning how to make content that's yeah. profitable and this and that what's that process been like yeah funny sort of thing. like getting getting into like the business side of uh-huh. coming off the show funniest thing for me I tell people all the time which it's like they almost don't believe it but I'm like I'm not built to be an influencer content creator it is something that's almost just like given to us from from the love and the fan reception from the show right and so i went from 1200 followers to to 200,000 overnight i was just like oh my god like i yeah, don't know i i don't know what to do with this and even <laughs> my own friends and family are like rodney you need to post more you need to post more i'm like wait what like it can be anxiety inducing yeah i mean it's it's almost like a a random pressure that just enters into your life and you know i was posting five times a year before the show and um, now I'm like, it is kind of like that pressure of, you know, Rodney, what are you up to? Or, you know, even when I post pictures where it's like a, it's like a photo shoot or anything like that or promoting a product and they're like, Oh, Rodney, I wish you would smile more. I wish you'd laugh more. And I'm like, I still am like, you know, just cause I don't show that on the post. It's like, I still am. It's not like I'm sad or anything. And it is one of those things where still to this day, two years later, I am still learning this life. And I'm grateful because some of the stuff I put out is very successful and you know in terms of those brand partnerships and content creation. the relationship must have been a good boost I mean, uh that's, that's yeah. a high traffic thing right yes most definitely that helped and i think another thing too is i think budgets are finally back for people there was a there was a lull there was a very slow period of time where i'm hitting up the guys and and justin and nate and, and andrew i'm like hey guys like is it slow for you too they're like yeah it's weird right now and you know budgets are down and and uh, brands you might have out. one of the best you have one of the best groups of guys that, that yeah. does make content you know we've had justin on and andrew yes. like you guys have a real special connection those I wonder, guys are professionals were you the first season that wasn't pandemic like in one location we, we were, were the first season that moved around a little bit correct yeah because they were still season 17 new mexico yeah just tough. stuck there yeah. tough we were uh we were season 18 palm springs and then we flew to Minneapolis, and then after that, the final three went to Mexico. And so, yeah, it was kind of towards the back end of COVID. And now uh, and now you're traveling to New Jersey. And that, you, look at me now. You <laughs> yeah, know? Look at you now. I'm excited. The season continues. The season of Rodney's life. Uh, Disturbia is the theme song. We'll have to get a copy of that karaoke. Um, and did we leave anything on the table here? I, I hate to uh, forget anything. No, I, I think we covered it all. This Dude, is fun. Thanks for doing the show, man. Can you no believe problem. that? We just flew by 48 minutes. Um, appreciate you <laughs> hanging out with me, and yeah. uh, good luck with the move. If you need any advice on living with the lady, let me tell you. I know who to hit up. <laughs> it's so funny, you know, like, I always say it's funny. I went from, like, having the Jim Belushi, like, college poster <laughs> to then the Aubrey Hepburn, like, the one that yeah. women have of them smoking. It's like, quickly, your poster comes down, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, whatever. She's already looked at some of mine. It's like, yeah, that's not going up. That's not going yeah. up. I'm like, oh. the best thing for a relationship is trying to anticipate what you want, what your lady wants you to answer. Yeah. Well, so if she's like, what should we do? Just anticipate that she wants Italian. Yeah. And always, and if she says she, and if she says she doesn't want a bite to eat, get another appetizer. Yes. If she's lying to you. Yes. Absolutely. That's what I'm learning. Dude. Yeah, man. So, well, good luck. I appreciate you. Can we get a selfie? Yeah. Let's I know do you it. got one, but let me take one. Let's go.